Hi there, this is Roma Waterman and you're listening to Release the Sound, a podcast on prophetic worship. I'm believing this podcast will help you to understand and flow in the power of Holy Spirit-led worship in your church and in your private worship time. In this podcast, you're going to get a big dose of theological foundations, personal stories and practical applications that you can implement straight away to activate the power of prophetic worship that will bring healing, breakthrough and deliverance in your communities and your personal life. I hope as you listen, you'll also feel inspired and empowered. This is Release the Sound, a podcast on prophetic worship. Hi there, welcome to the podcast on all things prophetic worship. I am so excited that you have joined me today. We are going to talk about four quick wins for growing in prophetic worship, four things that you can implement straight away and see results. And I'm also going to give you an example by singing something out spontaneously that I recorded just now as I was writing these notes. So I just pressed record and I thought I'll have to practice what I preach. And so when we get to that point, you'll see it will be completely spontaneous. But I wanted to give you some examples of what it can look like to move in the prophetic. And these four quick wins, you can implement them straight away. They're really helpful and they're really simple. So let's get straight into it today. Number one in the four quick wins for growing in prophetic worship, how do we get our teams to grow in the prophetic? How do we grow in a public setting? How do we do this in our own private worship time? Well, number one is fill up your worship sets with less songs. Fill up your worship sets with less songs. Now, this might seem like a really simple thing to do, but if you're like me, I grew up in an era of worship where we had our set songs and then we had another few songs just in case. So if you have like a 20-minute set, a 45-minute set in church, or maybe an hour, every church is different, or maybe 15 minutes. I don't know how you do 15 minutes. I'm holding your hand there, but you can do it. Let me tell you, I've done it before. That's for another podcast, but it doesn't matter how long you've got. What we tend to do is go, okay, so we're going to have enough songs to fill that space, and then we'll have some extra songs that are just on the side in case we need them. Now, it's important to be prepared. So here, what I'm saying here, we want to be prepared. So I'm not saying turn up and not be prepared, but there is a downside to having enough songs that fills the minutes. And that is there's no room for the spontaneous or the prophetic to move. And I might have some people say, they might argue with me. You might be saying, well, Roma, we might not use them, but at least they're there. And that is actually my whole point. If they are there, you are more likely to go to them when you feel stuck. But if there's nothing to jump to, you can't jump ship. You have to go deeper within yourself to draw on the prophetic that is within you, that prophetic gift that is within you. And so I love this idea of it's almost like you throw yourself into the deep end. You say to yourself, I am actually not going to have enough so that I have to draw on the deep well that is within me. And at first, it might feel a little clunky. It might feel a little uncomfortable. But oh my goodness, you're just going to come alive. It's it's actually an incredible experience. And what the Lord can do in those moments where you feel that you don't have nothing is so beautiful. It's so powerful. So when you create that space and you're filling up your worship sets with less, you start to have space to pause and you're not letting the set list do the work for you. It's your spiritual senses that have to do the work for you. And it actually means you have to be present and concentrate because you know that you don't have enough to fill a time frame. So what are some practical things that happen when you do this, when you have less to release? And that means that you actually have this space to pause. Well, it can allow you to go back to sections that you feel the Lord's highlighting to you. Have you ever had that feeling, for example, when you're in a song and you get to a certain section of the song and you feel the congregation just comes alive, something leaps in your spirit. You're like, wow, the, I can feel the presence of the Lord. It's like there's a section that the Lord is highlighting, a certain phrase or a tag. 
And often when we have a lot of songs to get through or we have a short amount of time and just too much information for that time is we don't linger in those moments. So when you have this space, you can go back to those. You can highlight those things you think that the Lord is highlighting. It could be a tag it could be a phrase of some sort, and really beautiful things can happen when you do that. So we're not just trying to sing stuff out just because we feel like it. We want to go to the places where there's life. And so we have the space to do that. It it allows us to think about what God wants to do and say, and then we can sing that out. We can declare it on the earth. And it doesn't even have to be a few sections. It can be a few simple words. And, and it's just beautiful when, when that happens. That brings me to my next point. What is my second quick win? Number two, make time other than a service to practice the prophetic, practice the spontaneous. Make time other than a service to practice it. You know, if we only have our Sunday services to practice the prophetic, because that's really what you're doing as you explore this, what can actually happen is there's so many dynamics on a Sunday, isn't there? Or there's so many dynamics when other people come into the room that it can be difficult to enter those spaces and places that the Lord wants you to enter. And so we always say to people, find other places to practice the prophetic. Now, let me just go to that at the moment. You might be going, what? Practice the prophetic? That makes no sense. But you can. It is a skill like anything else. Learning to hear the voice of the Father in your own style, in the own, you have a way of hearing him. And then learning to release that is so important. And as we do it more, we develop that confidence and we develop that skill. And it's much like, you know, I compare it all the time to scatting in jazz music. I don't know if you've heard that phrase, scatting. It's when, um, you know, you might be singing some sort of jumble of words and phrases that don't make too much sense over a certain section of a song. So you will have heard it before if you listen to jazz music. It might sound a little bit like a ba da ba da ba da 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 ba 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 something like that, right? And so scatting is actually a skill. It might seem really simple to just sing it. And I know it's a skill because when I first started singing in a band that was outside of the church walls, I was maybe 16 years old and I got asked to join this jazz band to sing in a pub on a Sunday afternoon. And all the musicians in this band were a lot older than me. They were in their 30s and their 40s at the time. And I remember in our rehearsals, they'd say, okay, uh, Roma, we're going to do a bit of scatting in this song. And I remember the first time they asked me to do this, fear rose up in me. I was like, what? What is scatting? And so I had to say, what is scatting? And they were like, oh, oh, it's just where you just sing a bunch of made up stuff over certain sections. And I was like, well, when do I know how to come in? And when do I know how to leave? Like, stop singing it. And they laughed at me. I remember them going, Roma, you'll just feel it and you'll know. Well, I remember the first Sunday came along that we had to do this and I was so nervous. And we get to this particular song and it gets to the point where I'm not singing anything at all, right? So finally, the band leader just looks at me and he's like, right, can you just start scatting? And that first time I did it, I felt so stupid. I felt silly. I was like making up a bunch of words. I didn't know when to end. I'm like, have I finished too early? Have I gone for too long? But you know, after a couple of months of practicing that, it became second nature to me. I didn't even need to think about it, but I had to practice that. And it's the same with the prophetic in worship. If we have those spaces where we can practice, practice that moment of releasing the spontaneous or practicing not even just the spontaneous, but knowing the timings and the seasons of what the Lord is trying to do during that worship time. It's very powerful, but we don't want to do that on a Sunday all the time when there's lots of dynamics, where there's congregation members coming in. We don't want to be the kind of worshiper that is bleeding on our congregation, making lots of mess and, and it doesn't mean that you're not going to make mistakes, okay? And, and actually, 
we'll talk about this in another podcast, but the freedom to make mistakes is very important. But there should be other avenues for you to explore this practice of the prophetic. We often suggest home groups, doing it at home by yourself, get an instrument if you have an instrument, or even just go to YouTube and look up um, soaking music that's just got music and just sing over it spontaneously just so that you can practice. Smaller services like prayer meetings, these are great ways for you to practice the prophetic. And then obviously don't rule out your Sunday services. It's still really important, but What you can also do in those Sunday services is not come with the expectation that you have to fill every second of the space with something prophetic. Because a lot of people think prophetic means just off the cuff, I'm just going to do what happens. But no, actually just going, I'm just going to come and I'm going to release what I feel is on my heart in that moment. We're not robots. We don't press a button and then it's all on for the prophetic. We want to be people that listen to his voice. So making time, number one, other than a service to practice it, but also coming to those services, understanding that as you have practiced in other places, when you sense the timing of God, you will be ready to release something is really powerful. This brings me to number three in our four quick wins, and that is singing the scriptures. Oh my goodness. Singing the scriptures is just so powerful. And there's lots of reasons why. Of course, it's because you're singing the word of God. And don't we want to sing the word of God? That is what we want to release across the earth, right? I mean, more than anything, you know, it's going to be theologically sound. You know that God wants to speak because scripture is foundational to the Lord speaking. That's the way he it is one of the primary ways, if not the primary way, that he will speak to his people. And one of the things I love about singing the scriptures is that it just takes that element of way of the expectation that you have to sing something spontaneous. So you're taking one element away so that you can concentrate more on the overflow that is in your heart, on a melody, of understanding and sensing where the music's going, what is the Lord trying to do. So it just kind of simplifies things a little bit and it really helps with developing the prophetic song. In fact, it's actually one of the easiest ways when you're just starting out in moving in the prophetic to to release uh, prophetic worship. So that's not to say that it's just a starting point and that after you become more experienced, you no longer need it. It's actually quite the opposite. Scripture is always going to be good because it's the word of God. But when we sing out these words and we agree with them, there's just something beautiful that happens. So some of the ways that you can use scripture, and this is where I'm going to give you an example. Here's some three questions you can ask yourself as you are practicing this. Number one, is there one theme or phrase that needs to be sung over and over? Choose what you feel needs emphasis. So if you have a scripture on your heart, you know, a lot of times we'll have a scripture on our heart during the week and we won't connect that that's because the Lord's highlighting it for a time of worship. So if you are a worship leader listening to this right now, pay attention to what the Lord is actually teaching you personally, because bringing that testimony to your worship Oh, it's so powerful. So thinking about those themes or those phrases and going, is there something that needs to be emphasized? It doesn't have to be a whole psalm or a whole chapter. In fact, that can be a bit overwhelming. It just needs to be one theme or one phrase that could be sung over and over. Something that is simple that you feel in your spirit needs emphasis. You know, as I'm saying this, I feel the Lord just saying to me, You know, I trust my worshippers to hear my voice. He actually trusts you. He trusts what needs emphasis will come to your spirit and you will release it. So number one, is there one theme or phrase that needs to be sung over and over? Another question to ask is, is this a song I want the congregation to sing or is it one that I just want to sing out? Because there's a different dynamic at play with those two options. So for example, if it's one for the congregation, it needs to be simple and easy to learn. 
and that way people will feel comfortable to join in. But if it's to sing out, you can take a little bit more liberties with your melody and with your words. You can linger a bit more, can have different sections. So it can be a little bit more complex. And I do love the idea of people, a congregation singing things out. So make sure that you make that a part of your culture. It might take a little while for people to realize it. One thing we do is we say to our singers, you know, if you hear me singing something repetitively, don't just pull back, sing along with me so that the congregation feels like and understands that this is something we want them to sing out as well. But understanding whether it's a song for the congregation to sing or one that you are meant to sing out yourself will change the way that you release it. So it's a good question to ask. And then the final question or the final idea is experiment using different Bible translations when you're practicing this. So obviously not in a main service when people are watching you, but I will often sit at my piano by myself if I have a a scripture that's highlighted to me and I will read different translations of that scripture and sing them out. And I always get something different when I'm using different translations. And the thing that I love about this is that what you're doing is you're meditating on the word of God as you do this. And that's important in us trusting that prophetic flow that is on the inside of us. So experimenting with different Bible translations, I personally love the message translation. With that in mind, I thought you'd like to see practically an example of what it's like to sing out a scripture spontaneously and prophetically. So I'm going to model that right now. I'm not going to say it's amazing or perfect because I wanted it to be purely spontaneous. So I'm just going to sing something out that's on my heart and give you an example of what that might look like. Okay, so for this example, I am going to use Psalm 121. That's what came up in my heart as I thought about doing this activation, which is, I lift my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Verse 3, he will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber or sleep. Now, as I do this exercise, some simple things to keep in mind. This is the scripture that's came up in my heart, so that's the one I'm going to sing. Number two, you don't have to use a whole psalm. Less is more. And then number three, I just try to keep the chord progressions really simple. That's why I've actually used a pad and not played piano as I sang here, just for this example. But if you're doing this with your team or with another musician, keeping your chord progressions to even, you can even just use one chord or one to three, one to four, just keeping it really simple. And then you just start to sing out what's on your heart, keeping it really simple. And then it might allow you to go to other places where you feel the Lord wants you to go. So let's experiment and see what happens. I'm just making this up as I go along. So I'm just going to start and see where the Lord takes us. I will lift my eyes to the hills where my help comes from. And so we say 
then you might just sing some sort of melody. My final point I want to make in our four quick wins to seeing prophetic worship overflow in your worship times is savour the silence. Number four, savour the silence. We must allow space. Don't be afraid of the gaps. You know, it can feel a little bit daunting when we come to a space in worship where there's sometimes not even any instruments or Maybe you're the worship leader and the band is playing and you're like, I don't know what to do next. Be okay with that. Don't be afraid of the silence. Don't be afraid of instruments taking the lead. Make room for it. You know, if you leave that gap, it will be filled by him and it will be filled by his presence. And I want to say to you, if you are a leader, if you're worship leading, It doesn't always mean taking the lead. It can often mean stepping back. There's been lots of times when I was leading worship where the Lord just went, okay, that's good. Now you can just, I want you to step back for a bit. And I remember the first first few times I did that feeling a little nervous. I remember the team looking at me going, where's the leader? What is she doing? But actually it makes people rise to the occasion. It makes people become attentive but it also makes you attentive to making room for the Lord to highlight another voice or another instrument. And as you do this, it actually creates a culture of prophetic worship, not just stewarding one gift in one person, but you're actually creating this culture. So in conclusion, what are our four quick wins? This is what we shared today. Filling up your worship set with less songs, Number two, making time away from a service to practice the prophetic. Think of scatting. (laughs) Number three, singing the scriptures. And then number four, savor the silence. I want to end by answering this question. You might go, what makes all of this prophetic? You know, you can sing anything out. You could sing your worship to God. It can be spontaneous and in the moment. But, you know, it actually Doing that, singing from the overflow of your heart in a public setting, it might be spontaneous, but it doesn't always carry the prophetic voice of God. If you listen to um, the first few podcasts in this series, you notice that we talked about what it means to be a prophet according to the scriptures and having that prophetic voice means to be a spokesperson for God. So that's what it has to have. The song has to carry a message for the moment. Now that doesn't mean you might be going, thus says the Lord, my king of my country is going to fall or anything like that, right? Or whatever. It does. It's not necessarily about predicting the future. It's about understanding the moment. What is the Lord actually saying in the moment? Is he wanting to encourage people? Is he wanting you to sing against a spirit of suicide? Is he wanting you to sing hope over people? So you're carrying a message for the moment. And what I'll often do is I will sing in the opposite spirit. So if I sense, for example, that there is despair of some kind, I'm not going to sing Um, you know, I sense despair in the room. (laughs) I'm going to sing, you are the hope of the nations, Lord, hope for every heart in this place. And so you start to just, whatever is bubbling up, that bubbling of the prophetic that is inside of you, that is what makes that song in the moment prophetic. And so I want to encourage you today to create that space to savor the silence, sing the scriptures, Make time away from your services and fill up your worship set with let's songs to see what the Lord will do. Let me pray with you to end. Father God, I just thank you for every single person that's listening to this today. Lord, I just ask you to instill a spirit of bravery 
in their heart, Lord? Would you urge them? Would you encourage them to release that prophetic song, your voice across the land, across their churches, even across nations, Father God? I just ask for the prophetic song on earth as it is in heaven to be filling their mouths today in Jesus' name. The sound that transforms atmospheres would be on their lips. I thank you, Father, that your song is so powerful. It is a weapon. It is a weapon of war. It is a weapon of worship. And Lord, we say our hands and our hearts are open to release the sound in this season. Amen. Thanks so much for listening to Release the Sound, a podcast on prophetic worship. If you're hungry for more, head to romawaterman.com where you can check out my book, Releasing Heaven's Song, Singing Over Your Nation for Breakthrough and Revival. It includes activations that you can use with your team or even on your own. And I've also got an online school where we have several courses on the prophetic, worship, spirituality and creativity. Also, don't forget to subscribe to this podcast and leave us a review. And until then, I pray that you will release the song of heaven over your family, your church, and even your nation. And I look forward to sharing with you in the next Release the Sound Prophetic Worship Podcast.